Hi and welcome back to Data Garden. Thanks for checking out my video, I hope you're doing very well. Today we are back in our series for the XGBoost algorithm and after the last video where we have tuned the XGBoost tree algorithm with the caret package, today we want to do the same with the XGBoost linear algorithm. If you want to complete this tutorial, then you will need the code from the previous tutorial. And uh, if you haven't completed that one, I will post the link to the previous video down below. And I will also post the code as a paste bin so that you can get started right away. To summarize what we have done in the last video is we have started with the Friedman 1 data set from the MLBench package where we have created 10,000 observations. We have used 5,000 of those for training and the other 5,000 for testing. And as sort of our benchmark model, we have created a simple linear model with all of the um, variables as uh, predictor variables. And we have got an almost unbiased model with an RMSE of 2.58. Then we have created an XGB tree model and we have got an even less biased model and with less than half the RMSE, 1.16 in fact. Now let us see if we can use the uh, XGBoost linear model in order to create an even better algorithm. What we're going to do in order to do that is we're going to copy all of this code from line 22 and uh, onwards. And a few lines below, let's say line 48, we're going to paste it. And we are going to change some of the parameters. Before we get into that though, if you are starting your R uh, newly up, please remember to run your library commands. Okay, so now let's get into it. And in the command starting from line 48, we are going to change the name of the object to XGB model linear underscore linear so that later on we can distinguish the different models. The nice thing about the caret um, package is that you can test out a lot of different um, algorithms with quite an ease where most of the inputs are staying the same all the time. So for example, the x variables, the y variables, and the objective, we don't have to change. We can uh, completely uh, keep them unchanged. And the same is true for our train control. All we need to change is the method where we want to use XGBoost linear. And we have to change the tune grid because the parameters that we have defined here are not valid for the linear algorithm. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove all of the code for the parameters max depths, gamma, call sample by tree, subsample, and min child weight. And we're going to add two new lines instead. So notice here's the closing bracket and then the comma and then another closing bracket and another comma. And after the first comma, we add a new line and we define a parameter called alpha. And that will be having the values 0, 1, and uh, 100. And after the first closing bracket, we type another comma and a new line and define a parameter called lambda. And that will be having also the options one, uh, 0, 1, and 100. So with that, we are basically done and we can train our model. And um, I have a typo here. It's linear with uh, out the second E. And now we can press run. And there you see already that um, our algorithm is starting to optimize and uh, creating all the different possibilities three times repeated and a twofold cross validation. Now, while the algorithm is working, I'm going to explain a little bit uh, what the XGBoost linear algorithm is and um, what these two new hyperparameters are. So the XGBoost linear algorithm, essentially, as the name suggests, it creates a lot of little linear models where each of the um, 
iterative models builds on the previous model. So it uh, changes the model sort of for these observations where the error is the highest. Now, as with the XGBoost tree model, it has a loss function, which is the squared error, which we have defined here. And what these two parameters, alpha and lambda, do is that they add to the loss function the complexity of the model, so to say. So if these values here are zero, then it means that the loss is only the squared error and the model will be optimized as far as it can in order to train, uh, in order to reduce the squared error on the training data set. What this does is if we have very low values here for alpha and or lambda, is that the model is likely to be overfitted to the training data and it will not perform so well on the holdout data. Whereas if we select higher values for alpha and lambda, then the model, uh, model will be penalized for being too fitted on the training data, which is basically judging from the, um, the, the height of the coefficients, so to say, how strong the coefficients are. Um, if we penalize that, if we take it into our objective function, then the model will be less likely to be overfitted to the training data, or to some point it will also be likely to be underfitted if we choose these values too high. And um, maybe from other models, from other penalized models, you know the term L1 and L2 regularization. In this case, the alpha term is the L1 regular regularization and lambda is the L2 regularization. So um, yeah, I think what this means, you don't have to know right now to perform the algorithm. Just notice uh, that lower value means the model will be more fitted and higher value means that the model will be less fitted to the training data because there is more penalty involved. So accordingly, if you find that you have a low error on the training data set and high error on the test data set, then you might want to increase either alpha, uh, alpha or lambda. Whereas um, if both errors are about the same, then you might be able to increase the accuracy or the, the predictive power of the model by uh, reducing the alpha or the lambda components. Okay, with that being said, um, the algorithm will still need a while, so I will be back with you once it is done. Uh, so yeah, grab yourself a good cup of coffee and see you back in a few minutes. Okay, so for me the training of the algorithm is done. And as a note here, at the time of recording this video with uh, my versions of the XGBoost and Carrot packages, there come up these warnings uh, at the end of the training where we can quickly show them. Warnings. And um, it tells us for every training iteration that we have done um, that the objective has been provided multiple times and only the last value will be used. But uh, I don't know, to my understanding, it's really not true that uh, it has been prov uh, provided multiple times. Um, so if we don't provide a value here, then it will give us a different warning. So I think it's safe that you just ignore these uh, warnings if they happen to come up for you as well. So I'm going to clear the console with Control and L. And now let's get to the calculation of the errors. So let's change testing dollar pret underscore xgb to underscore xgb underscore train um, linear, sorry. And we also have to change the predict command here to xgb model underscore linear and the second component can be the same. Press run. And also the error xgb, we change that to error xgb underscore 
linear and we have to change it from testing dollar pred underscore xgb to pred underscore xgb linear and uh, minus testing dollar y that is correct so we press run again and we now want to calculate the mean of testing dollar error underscore xgb underscore linear for me these values are already there because um, i have uh, tested this tutorial beforehand just in case you're wondering and we also want to calculate the rmse of the linear model so in order to remember well what our benchmark is let's show the values for the linear model again and for the XGBoost model and now let's show the values of the XGBoost linear model so we see that it is in fact less biased uh, than the XGBoost 3 less than uh, any of the other models that we have had so far but the RMSE is with 1.29 it is higher than that of the XGBoost 3 model but still only just about half of the um, LM linear model, ordinarily squares. So what do we make of that? Shall you use it? I think in most instances for most data sets, the XGBoost tree algorithm is superior to the linear algorithm. Nonetheless, if you have time to test out both, then I recommend that you always try them, always try optimizing them, because maybe it happens that your data set is well suited for the XGBoost linear algorithm and it's worth giving it a try. So tell me in the comments, what do you think of this algorithm? Um, do you think you have a good uh, project where it might be useful? If you have liked this tutorial, then uh, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos about machine learning, data science, data analytics and R, then uh, subscribe to the channel because I have more videos coming up very soon. If you have any questions regarding this tutorial, then uh, also leave them down below in the comments and I will see if I can answer them. So uh, I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.